Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Agent Strzok, the FBI investigation into potential Russia collusion with the Trump campaign began on July 31st, 2016. You uh, drafted the originating document. You approved the originating document. You were the point of contact on the originating document. And the FBI has represented to Congress that nothing from an investigative standpoint with respect to Russian collusion and the Trump campaign began before July 31st, 2016. But 10 days before the investigation even began, 10 days before you drafted the originating document, approved the originating document, was the point of contact on the originating document, 10 days before the investigation began, which the department you work for says nothing was done before July 31st. You said Trump is a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. And because you struggled a couple of weeks ago with a word that I thought had a commonly accepted definition, I'm going to go ahead and give you the definition of destabilizing. The first one kind of is obvious. It's to make unstable. The second one caught my attention, the second dictionary definition. To call something such as a government to be incapable of functioning or surviving. That's a pretty significant allegation to make 10 days before you even began to investigate someone. So that was before July 31st. I want to ask you in that first week, we'll go ahead and up it to eight days. Between July 31st and August 8th, how many interviews did you conduct related to the alleged collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign? So, Congressman, as you know, counsel for the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, has instructed me not to answer questions about the ongoing investigation. I'm asking for a number. Russian attempts to Agent, interfere. Agent Strzok, I'm asking for a number. I haven't gotten to the names. How many people had you, had you interviewed between the beginning of it on July 31st and August the 8th? It's an eight-day time period. We're a week into an investigation. How many people had you interviewed? Congressman, I understand your question. I appreciate it, and I would very much like to answer. But as I've stated, as you know that counsel of the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, have directed me not to answer any <coughs> questions about the ongoing investigation into Russian attempts to interfere. So, so you well, the, gentleman, the gentleman will election. suspend, and the clock will suspend. Mr. Strzok, you are under subpoena and are required to answer the question. Are you objecting to the question? If so, please state your objection. Mr. Chairman, I object. The, the gentleman it does not have standing Mr. to Chair object. I, there is no point, point of order. No point of order well, here. The, the, the point of order it should be heard. What's the, what's the gentleman will state his point of order. My point of order is that intentionally or otherwise, this demand puts Mr. Strzok in an impossible position. He is still an employee of the FBI, and FBI counsel has the, instructed him not to answer the question. The gentleman, if we have a problem with this policy, we should take it up with the FBI, not Badger, Mr. Strzok. The but gentleman's should, point of order is not well taken. It's right the, on point. No, it's not. The, Mr. Strzok, are you objecting to the question? And if so, please state your objection. Mr. Chairman, two things. One, I do not believe I am here under subpoena. I believe I am here voluntarily. Second. I will not, based on direction of the FBI to me, based on that, I will not answer that question because it goes to matters which are related to the ongoing investigations being undertaken by the special Mr. counsel's Strzok, office. Mr. Strzok, you have not stated a l valid legal basis for not responding to a question directed to you by a member of the United States House of Representatives, and you are overruled point of order mr chairman your uh, let me point. let me continue your testimony is essential to this hearing and to our oversight and information gathering functions with regard to the actions taken mm. and decisions made by the department of justice and the federal bureau of investigation in 2016 and 2017 i am specifically directing you to answer the question in response to our subpoena notwithstanding your objection point of order mr chairman Mr. Strzok, please be advised 
that you can either comply with the committee's directive to answer the question or refuse to do so, the latter of which will place you at risk of a contempt citation and potential criminal liability. Point do, of do order. Do you understand that? Point of order, Mr. The, Chairman. The question is directed to the witness. And I have a point of order before he answers the question. The, the, the point of order is not well taken until... You don't know what the point of order is. You can't say it's not well the, taken. The point of order, the, the, the witness will answer the question. Mr. Chairman, I, have, I raise my point of order and I insist on it. What is the point of order? The United States Attorney's Manual instructs department personnel not to respond to questions about the existence of an ongoing investigation or comment on its nature or progress. In a letter to Congressman John Linder in 2000, referred to as the Linder letter, the department made this policy explicitly applicable to requests from Congress. Quote, although Congress has a clearly legitimate interest in determining how the department enforces statutes, congressional inquiries during the pendency of a matter pose an inherent threat to the integrity of the department's law enforcement and litigation functions, Unquestion, unquote. Therefore, the, chairman, the question being directed at the, at the witness is out of order. The witness's declination to answer it as against the instructions of the FBI pursuant to FBI policy, which is necessary so as not to allow us to subvert an ongoing criminal investigation, he is right, the and he should not answer the question. The gentleman has not stated a valid I point of order. The ruling nonetheless, the chair in that nonetheless, case. nonetheless, the United States Supreme Court has recognized that it is unquestionably the duty of all citizens to cooperate with the Congress in its efforts to obtain the facts needed for intelligent legislative action. It is their unremitting obligation to respect the dignity of the Congress and its committees and to testify fully with respect to matters within the province of proper investigation. Mr. Chairman, I, the, the, I will, Mr. Chairman, you know, or we all know, that if we were to ask a question of a witness about a military secret, if we were to ask him, how does the H-bomb work, he could not answer that the question. This is the same thing. Stated, that is a classification issue, not an issue of whether or not this is a valid question for which... I appeal the ruling of the chair. He's not, there, it's not a point of order. He's ruled that it's not a point of order. That, that, is, that is not a ruling. Mr. Strzok... Mr. Chairman, I insist on my point of order, and I insist on Mr. Strzok. appealing the ruling of the chair. Mr. Strzok, knowing the advice that point I have Point of order, Mr. You. Chairman. Point of order. I believe there's a point of order that's been raised, and you've ruled. We have a right now to answer Mr. Nadler's. It is not a appeal. valid point of order. The and chair I has can't just already it, Mr. Chairman, question, because you don't. Question, on that ruling. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Strzok. Mr. Chairman, I appeal the ruling of the chair that you have just made. On that, on, the, on whether the you have not stated a valid point of and order, and that is your ruling, and that, I appeal it. That is not an appealable point of order. Yes, it is, Mr. Chairman. Appealing the ruling of the chair is exactly no, is what he's requesting. He's appealing it. That requires a vote to either sustain it or overrule it. The gentleman from New York has not cited a rule of the House that is being violated. Therefore, it is not a point of order. And That's I your appeal ruling, that ruling of the that. chair. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, is it not appropriate to also interject the attorney-client privilege, which cannot be overridden uh, and is a the, rule of the House to the, the extent that witnesses have suspend. the right to an attorney-client privilege in this House? Mr. And that is what this witness is uh, asserting. Attorney-client privilege, Mr. and he has been Strzok, advised not Mr. to answer the, the question. The gentleman will suspend. The gentleman has not raised the attorney-client privilege. He has said that he's been instructed by the FBI not to answer the question. Now, by lawyers, he knows. He knows the advice I have just given him. If he would like, I'll restate it. But knowing this, will you answer the committee's question as directed? Or do you refuse to answer the committee's question? Point, point of parliamentary inquiry, the ruling of the Mr. Chairman. Chair that point my of parliamentary order inquiry. was not in order. Point of parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. The, the, the gentleman from South Carolina has the time. A parliamentary inquiry is not in order during the gentleman's time. The chair is instructing the witness to answer the question. 
And the question to you is, Mr. Chairman, will you answer the committee's question as directed, or do you refuse to answer the committee's question? Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Second. You're not recognized for that purpose. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I think you have no choice but to recognize such a motion. I, I do not have. Are you just going to make up rules as we go along? The, 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 the motion is not in order during the time controlled by the gentleman from South Carolina. I appeal that ruling of the chair. The, Mr. Strzok, <laughs> will you chairman, answer? I appeal your ruling of the chair that my motion to adjourn is not in order. The gentleman is not in order. That may be, but I appeal your ruling. The gentleman is not recognized. Just take back over your time and fire away. Knowing this, Will you answer the committee's question as directed, or do you refuse to answer the committee's question? Mr. Chairman, as you know, counsel for the FBI has directed me not to answer questions about the ongoing investigation. As you also know, counsel for the FBI is sitting here behind me. May I consult with them? You may consult with your own counsel. Not but I may not consult with the only, FBI's counsel? Only with your own counsel. Mr. Chairman, there's no basis for that. He can consult <laughs> with the FBI counsel. He's an FBI the employee. The gentleman is not recognized. And the chairman is not being proper. The chairman is being proper. The witness can't be directed not to confer with his attorney. He, the, is, the FBI is not his attorney. His attorney is seated behind him. If he wishes He's an to employee of the attorney, FBI. He's already Mr. done. He may do so. And his attorney may consult with the FBI attorney? <laughs> Isn't the privilege that of the FBI, and shouldn't the FBI counsel be um, solicited on that point. Mr. Chairman, my counsel has reiterated that counsel for the FBI has directed that I may not answer that question. Mr. Strzok. In a moment, we will continue with the hearing, but based on your refusal to answer the question, at the conclusion of the day, we will be recessing the hearing, and you will be subject to recall to allow the committee to consider proceeding with a contempt citation. A point of order, Mr. Chairman. Will the committee also consider contempt for Mr. Bannon, who refused to answer Mr. Gowdy's questions when he was actually under subpoena? Is that, that is not too? a proper point of order in this hearing. Parliamentary inquiry. Mr. Gowdy, do you remember Parliamentary that? inquiry. The, the time that? is controlled by the gentleman from Parliamentary South inquiry. A parliamentary inquiry is Mr. not Bannon, in order when the gentleman from Mr. South Gowdy. Carolina controls the time. Agent Strzok, um, just so the record's clear, because it's been a, a, a little while, um, I didn't ask you the content of those interviews. I didn't ask you the names of who you interviewed. I asked you whether or not you interviewed anyone from July the 31st until August the 8th. And I find it interesting that the FBI will tell us no interviews were conducted before July 31st. That apparently doesn't impact an ongoing probe, but between July 31st and August 8th, it does. Here's the good news. Um, I already know the answer to it. I went and looked at the file. The first interview that I can find is on August the 11th of 2016, which is 11 days after it began which makes me wonder, on August the 6th, so you hadn't interviewed anyone, you're investigating this alleged Russian collusion with the Trump campaign, you're the lead investigator, you originated the investigation, you're the point of contact, you drafted the document, and here you are before you've interviewed a single solitary witness saying F Trump, then that same day your um, colleague, Lisa Page, wrote, Maybe you're meant to protect the country from that menace. And you responded, I can protect the country at many levels. We're not even a week into an investigation that you originated, approved, were the contact for. You hadn't interviewed a single solitary soul until August 11th. And you're already promising to protect the country from that menace, Donald Trump. And then on August the 8th, you still hadn't interviewed anyone. You're eight days into your Russian collusion with the Trump campaign investigation, and you got another text from your uh, colleague, Lisa Page. Trump's not ever going to become president, right? Right? And you replied, no. No, he's not. We'll stop it. By the time you promised to stop him from becoming president on August the 8th, how many interviews had you conducted? 
Mr. Gowdy, so two answers to that. One, with regard to how many interviews had or had not been conducted, I have been directed by counsel for the FBI not to answer that question. Second, sir, I think it's important to take those texts in the context of how they were written and what they meant. And, there, and someone may ask you that question, Agent Strzok, but I didn't. I ask you how many people you interviewed before you wrote it. If you want to get into context, let one of my other colleagues do that with you. Here's what I want to know. Who's the he and he's not? He is then candidate Trump. So when you said, no, Donald Trump's not, in, in connection with the question, going to become president, what's the it? Chairman we'll Gotti. stop it. Chairman Gotti, that text needs to be taken in the context I, I'm, of I'm asking, is. look, if you want to have a debate over a two-letter word, we're going to have to do that some other time. What and who did you mean by it? Mr. Gowdy, as I've stated, that text was written late at night in shorthand. I don't care when it was written. About. I don't care it's whether it was longhand, cursive. I don't care about any of that. I want to know what it meant, Agent Strzok. It would be his candidacy for the presidency. See, and my sense that the American it's, yeah, population it's not that tough. would not vote him into office. Right, right. Well, we hadn't gotten to the will yet. Well, I'm your, trying to, I'm trying to cut through the chase and explain the, the text. The I, will I is it. the American people. Is that right? That's your testimony. The will stop it. You were speaking on behalf of the American people. Is that correct? Mr. Gowdy, what my testimony is and what I said during extensive asking of this question during my prior interview is I don't recall writing that text. What Are I you denying you, writing the text? What I can tell you is that text in no way suggested that I or the FBI would take any action to influence the candidacy Agent of Agent Strzok, Trump. that, that is a fantastic answer to a question nobody asked. Yeah, Mr. Gowdy, My you asked what I question to you is Chairman, the, the wheel. going to be permitted to answer the question said, being posed? Well, you look forward to that. So your testimony. His time has expired, Mr. Ago, Chairman. Your testimony. Like two and a half a minutes. Weeks, it, it's going to be tough for me to get through it if I keep getting interrupted. Your testimony a couple of weeks ago was the we met the American people, which I found confusing because on November the 7th, which is the day before the election, you said this. These, you were concerned that those same American people that you were speaking on behalf of might actually elect Donald Trump president. So you said, OMG, this is effing terrifying. Um, I think we know what effing means. I'm pretty sure we have OMG down too. What was terrifying about those same American people you trusted to stop him in August, not stopping him in November? What was so terrifying about that, Agent Strzok? Mr. Gowdy, I, I had, do not have a copy of the transcript. We have not been provided that transcript. It's your text. To, to it's not the transcript. It's your text. Mr. Gowdy, what I would say in that is, one, I was not referring to the American electorate at all. The American electorate, I respect in their decisions and their right to vote is absolutely a cornerstone of our democracy. So at no time did I insult or call into question the, the, the judgment or the, the power of the American electorate. What I was expressing in that text is my personal belief and my personal sense of how I saw and what I believed in the uh, potential upcoming administration. And see, that, that's what I find so confounding because in August you blamed the we on the American people, that the American people would stop it because you don't want it to be you and Lisa Mr. Page. Chairman, and you don't want it to be order. the FBI. Are we not given five minutes to answer <laughs> questions? We have, been, we have indulged nine. this harassment nine minutes. The this chair. The judiciary and the oversight committee I thought the, we the gentlewoman, the, the gentlewoman will suspend. The chair, in agreement with the ranking members of both committees, agreed that there would be liberality in the questioning by the chairman and the ranking members of each committee. The gentleman will continue. What I find confounding, and Mr. Chairman, Agent we Strzok, expect that liberality on every one of our questionings. What I find confounding, Agent Strzok, is you were counting on the American people. That was the we you referenced in August when you said, we'll stop it. But the American people didn't stop it. He actually won. So then we go to March of 2017, and you're already talking longingly about him resigning. 
And then we go to the day that special counsel Mueller, well, before we go to that, that's March of 2017. March of 2016, you wrote, God, Hillary should win 100 million to zero. And I'm assuming Hillary would be former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton? That's correct. All right. In March of 2016, weren't you investigating her for potential mishandling of classified information? We were. Had you interviewed her yet? Uh, no. Had you interviewed more than 30 other witnesses that wound up being interviewed? Uh, I would have to check the case file, but I'll take your representation. That's well, if she had said something incriminating in your interview that took place months later of her, of, of her would she have won $100 million to zero then? Uh, likely not, no. Well, then why wouldn't you wait until the investigation was over before you have her the nominee and winning a general election against an opponent that hadn't even been named yet? $100 million to zero, Agent Strzok? That's how bad she should win? Mr. Gowdy, those personal expressions of my observing the political process of the presidential primaries had no bearing on my actions of any investigation to include the investigation of Secretary Clinton. You sir, couldn't think or of Or anybody a, else. Sir, you couldn't think may. of a single person that would not vote for Hillary Clinton for president? A hundred million to zero, sir, Agent that was, Strzok? So that was clearly hyperbole, uh, which I... Well, let's say it was hyperbole. Let's divide it by 10. How about we say it was hyperbolic and divide it by 10? 100 million divided by 10, I'm pretty sure it's 10 million. Zero divided by 10 is still zero. You couldn't think of a single solitary person that was going to vote for her for president before you interviewed her and while you were supposed to be investigating her. Congressman, clearly that's not the truth. Clearly, I could envision millions of Americans who are likely and did vote for then candidate. Well, you wrote it. My point, sir. Did you write point, it? Did you write that? I text? did write that, sir. Okay. In Were you under duress? Political expression engaging in hyperbole. Were you under duress? Asked and answered over and over again. The gentlewoman will suspend. The gentleman from South Carolina controls the time. All right. We're going to go into one other time period. May 17th, 2017. Bob Mueller is appointed. Your friend Jim Comey's been fired. He's already leaked the memos to his law professor friend and Mueller, a special counsel. Do you remember how long it took for you to start talking about impeachment after Bob Mueller was appointed? I don't, sir. One day. One day. And you were talking about impeachment. And for anyone who may have missed it the day after his appointment, Agent Strzok, you did it again five days later. Now, how many interviews had you done as part of the special counsel team within the first five days of his appointment? Sir, again, same answer as before. I can't get into details. Right, and the answer is also the same. It's zero. No interviews have been done. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, no interviews had been done by August the 8th when you're talking about stopping him and how terrifying it would be for him to win and how you can protect the country and no interviews have been done before you're talking about impeachment of the president. But Mr. no wonder Chairman. Bob Mueller kicked you off of the investigation, um, Agent Strzok. My question is, if you were kicked off when he read the text, shouldn't you have been kicked off when you wrote him? Not at all. Well, it wasn't the discovery of your text, Mr. Strzok. It was the existence of your bias that got you kicked off. No, Mr. Gowdy, it wasn't. I do not have bias. My personal opinions in no way. Well, then why did you get kicked off? Why would you get kicked off? Mr. Gowdy, my understanding of why I was kicked off was that based on an understanding of those texts and the perception that they might create. Is well, hang, that hang on a second, Council Agent Mueller Strzok. Hang on a second. Perception. Integrity. You're saying it was the perception there are 13 Democrats on the special counsel probe, including one who went to what he hoped was a victory party. That's a perception problem, too. They weren't kicked off. You were. Why were you kicked off? Mr. Gowdy, I cannot speak to special counsel Mueller. How long did you talk to him? These reasons why he did or did. How long did you talk to him when he let you go? I've. He witness answer the question. The will be afforded the opportunity to My recollection is it was a short meeting, somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes, probably around 15 minutes. And your testimony is Bob Mueller did not kick you off because of the content of your text. He kicked you off because of some appearance that he was worried about. My testimony, what you asked and what I responded to, was that he kicked me off because of my bias. I'm stating to you it is not my understanding that he kicked me off because of any bias, that it was done based on the appearance. 
If you want to represent what you said accurately, I'm happy to answer that question, but I don't appreciate what was originally said being changed. I don't give a damn what you appreciate, Agent Strzok. I don't appreciate having an FBI agent with an unprecedented level of animus working on two major investigations during 2016. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Cummings. Oh, point of Mr. Order, Mr. Chairman, can I respond to some answer the questions that you promised him he would have an opportunity to answer? Does we endured 15 minutes of badgering of the witness. Can he be allowed now to answer as you promised, Mr. Chairman? The gentleman will suspend. The witness at any time can ask for additional time to respond to any member's question if the, the time has been uh, you ended. You said you were going to give him that opportunity at the end. I am of giving him that opportunity. Mr. Chairman, may I respond to Yes, you may. Yes, you uh, Sir, I think it's important when you look at those texts that you understand the context in which they were made and the things that were going on across America. In terms of the text that we will stop it, you need to understand that that was written late at night off the cuff and it was in response to a series of events that included then candidate Trump insulting the immigrant family of a fallen war hero. And my presumption, based on that horrible, disgusting behavior, that the American population would not elect somebody demonstrating that behavior to be president of the United States. It was in no way, unequivocally, any suggestion that me, the FBI, would take any action whatsoever to improperly impact the electoral process for any candidate. So I, I take great offense and I take great disagreement to your assertion of what that was or wasn't. As to the 100 million to one, that was clearly a statement made in jest and using hyperbole. I, of course, recognize that millions of Americans were likely to vote for candidate Trump. I acknowledge that is absolutely their right. That is what makes our democracy such a vibrant process that it is. But to suggest somehow that we can parse down the words of shorthand textual conversations like there's some contract for a car is, is simply not consistent with my or most people's use of text messaging. I can assure you, Mr. Chairman, at no time in any of these texts did those personal beliefs ever enter into the realm of any action I took. Furthermore, this isn't just me sitting here telling you, you don't have to take my word for it. At every step, at every investigative decision, there are multiple layers of people above me, the assistant director, executive assistant director, deputy director, and director of the FBI, and multiple layers of people below me, section chiefs, supervisors, unit chiefs, case agents, and analysts, all of whom were involved in all of these decisions. They would not tolerate any improper behavior in me any more than I would tolerate it in them. That is who we are as the FBI. And the suggestion that I, in some dark chamber somewhere in the FBI, would somehow cast aside all of these procedures, all of these safeguards, and somehow be able to do this is astounding to me. It simply couldn't happen. And the proposition that that is going on, that it might occur anywhere in the FBI, deeply corrodes what the FBI is in American society, the effectiveness of their mission, and it is deeply destructive. The, 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 Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. I have a rule.